This is Norman Finkelstein TRT World Live. I don't know who they are, but this is where he, he was on, and he's speaking about the topic of Palestine um, and also some foreign leaders. President Biden has turned the Gaza genocide into a photo op for himself. Ursula van der Leyen was one of the key supporters of the genocide is now trying to clear her name. She's a bona fide war criminal. It's not for no reason that Claire Daly in the European Parliament calls her Frau Genocide, or as I prefer to call her, the Nazi princess. Now let's get down to the facts. There's no problem with getting food and medicine to the periphery of Gaza. There are hundreds of trucks which are ready to go in. It doesn't change anything one whit if there is a floating pier on the water periphery of Gaza. That's not the problem. The problem is getting the food and the medicine from the periphery to the people. And Israel is blocking that. It's blocking it both physically and also by its continued indiscriminate bombing to terrorize the civilian population. There's something truly sickening when the president of the United States turns the martyrdom of the people of Gaza into an election year photo op. He's trying to recreate the Berlin airlift of 1948, this time by building a floating pier. I don't know why he just doesn't call on Captain Kirk <laughs> from the Starship <laughs> Enterprise. And this is what people like about Norman, these little quirky, funny uh, sort of phrasings that he inserts in his um, analysis. But he's speaking to what Nick and I was just talking about, but he he's kind of honing in on the point, which is there's aid there. So building a port isn't to get aid there because aid is already there. The problem is the blockade. That's the problem. So this illusion that they're trying to present that the port is somehow going to bring the needed food that's, that they don't have, that is just simply um, a misrepresentation of what the port can and will do. And it's an underrepresentation of what's actually happening on the ground in Israel with this with this un un uh, un come upcoming famine that's happening that will be at, taking place in Gaza. Ice to beam the death, Martin pot pies. This is so preposterous, so ridiculous. The idea that any sane person, any rational person, can take seriously. At this point in time, the words of the two key leaders, the two key supporters of the Gaza genocide outside Israel, namely Ursula van der Leyen, Frau Genocide, the Nazi princess, and President Biden. It's simply bewildering. But frankly, I'm, I'm I don't believe it fools anybody except for those ghouls inside the Democratic Party bubble. And Norman, yes. uh, President Biden and Ursula von der Leyen would no doubt refute those claims were they here they to might, do so. They um, might, what they, they need... Deny, they might deny the claims, but the factual evidence denies them the option of refuting the claims. There can be no question whatsoever that the two key supporters of the Gaza genocide outside the state of Israel are Ursula van der Leyen and Joe Biden. That is not up for debate. That is not controversial. That is an irrefutable fact. And clearly what the people of Gaza need right now, Norman, is humanitarian aid in, in huge they amounts. And therefore... They need bombs to stop. That's what they need. They need the U.S. to stop sending, uh, having secret sales of weapons. I remember the reporting, and it was from one of Nick's hotspots, 83% of the 
of the bombs dropped are U.S. bombs. Oh, I got that from Bernie Sanders. 83%. So if U.S. wasn't supplying it, are you telling me 83% of the bombs dropped would be eliminated? Does that mean 83% of the people who have been killed would be alive? That's how I look at it. But let's let's listen. The host tries to to get in there with Norman, but Norman is just when he has his head of steam, it's hard to stop him. Or what 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 is needed is a diplomatic solution to try and establish uh, further further abilities to get that aid into Gaza. Do you have hold any positive hopes of a diplomatic solution? No, I do not. Because Israel is determined, it's determined either to ethnically cleanse Gaza, turn Gaza into a wasteland or to dispose of physically every living person, every sentient being in Gaza. And the United States will not exert the force to stop it. So I cannot say optimistic about a diplomatic settlement, but we should be clear on the facts. Number one, there is no lack, there is no lack of food. Nope. or medicine earmarked for the people of Gaza. It's there. It doesn't require a, fo a floating bathtub. It's right there <laughs> at the gates of Gaza. It's Israel that's blocking the delivery of the foodstuffs and the medicine. Number two, the chief supporters of the Gaza genocide are now trying to clear their names by pretending to be concerned about the fate of the people of Gaza. And Norman, just while we have you briefly, uh, you said back in 2020 that you'd given up on Gaza much as it pained you. You'd, you'd spent enough of your life documenting and chronicling the plight of the people of Gaza uh, and that uh, much as it pained you, you felt you had to therefore turn your back on it and move on with your life. How do you feel about Gaza and, and, and the future of Palestinians? It would be a sin against man and a sin against God to turn your back on the people who have suffered relentless, relentless martyrdom at the, at the, by a heartless and at this point pathologically sick occupying power. He has a way of <laughs> destroying, um, I hope when I'm his age, I have gained enough wisdom and just don't give a fuck the way that, that he does. I think I'm close. I'm, I'm pretty close to the, to the don't, uh, you know, give a fuck sort of uh, uh, understanding. I think I'm pretty close to that. 